The year is 2017. Kelsey Plum has just set the NCAA D1 scoring record at 3,527 points. The Washington Huskies lose in the Sweet 16 to Mississippi State, but that's okay because Kelsey Plum would be taken number one overall in the WNBA draft by the San Antonio Stars. With Plum Dog only scoring 8.5 points per game her rookie season, the Stars would go 8-26, leading to another number one pick for the team in 2018 after moving to Las Vegas. But even with future two-time MVP Asia Wilson, the Aces struggled to stay above 500 and Kelsey Plum couldn't score more than 10 points per game. So the Aces get another number one pick in 2019, Jackie Young. And the Aces have basically been rolling ever since. First, a semifinals appearance in 2019, then a finals appearance in 2020, notably with Kelsey Plum out with an Achilles injury, then another semifinals appearance in 2021, thanks in part to Kelsey Plum hitting her stride, scoring 14.8 points per game off the bench and winning the Sixth Player of the Year award. And of course, a finals win in 2022 and 2023 as Plum Dog makes her first two all-star appearances. It might be surprising that someone who scored more points than anyone else in college would initially struggle in the pros before finding success, but today we'll discuss the data which shows not only how common it is for drafted players to face an uphill battle in their first year in the W, but also how often we'd expect a number one pick to win a championship for their franchise. This is the championship tendency of number one picks in the WNBA as well as some sad facts about rookies. Let's start with the basics. The WNBA is so rough for rookies. This part is less about number one picks and more about rookies in general. Looking at the 2023 draft class, only 19 of the 36 drafted players even saw game time. Much of this has to do with the fact that there are only 12 teams with 12 roster spots each, so many rookies are waived by the end of training camp. Outside of the number one pick, it's basically anyone's guess how a draft pick might perform or how much opportunity they will have to prove themselves on the court. And sure, a couple of the players drafted in 2023 were more of a injured draft and stash player type thing, but it gets worse from there. Of those 19 draftees that got to play, only four started more than half of their team's games. Two of those were of course number one pick Aaliyah Boston and number two pick Diamond Miller, but the other two came in the second round. Dorka Yuhaz on the Lynx started 27 games, and Dulce Fancam Mangiadu on the Storm started 21. Among rookies, there is a lot of variance in minutes played. Rookie playing time depends a lot on the existing team rosters because like I said, there's only 12 roster spots on each team. So for a rookie to get one, it means they have to either be really ready to play with the pros, or the team needs to just happen to have extra space and time to develop them. Teams always seem to make space for their number one pick, and we can kind of see that in this chart showing the minutes played and points scored for rookies in 2023. Number one pick Aaliyah Boston blows most of the rookies out in terms of minutes and points, but she's also the only rookie that was able to play and start all 40 games. Had Diamond Miller not been injured for eight games, maybe she would have had more similar numbers, which we can start to see in this other chart that shows each rookie's cumulative points by game number. This plot includes all-star game and playoffs, by the way. I'm not going to argue that being a high draft pick leads to more success, but being a high draft pick certainly leads to greater expectations and definitely more minutes on the floor. While points and minutes aren't the only way to determine a rookie's success, it is one thing that sets number one picks apart from the rest of the draft class. A good handful of rookies did play around 40 games, or even more if their teams went to the playoffs, but Aaliyah Boston was the only one that scored more than 500 points. All this isn't to say that number one picks can't succeed their rookie year. The Rookie of the Year award has been given out 26 times, and 12 of those times it's gone to a non-number one pick. It might surprise some to hear that it wasn't Sabrina Unescu to win Rookie of the Year in 2020, rather it was Crystal Dangerfield out of UConn. So while being the number one pick usually means that you are basically guaranteed a roster spot and playing time, not being a number one pick isn't a death sentence either. As with anything, anyone can achieve greatness if they just work hard enough. So now we know the obviously number one picks blow everyone out of the water within their rookie class, but how does the rest of their career tend to pan out? I know that rings aren't the only way to judge someone's success in life, but honestly, it's like the ultimate goal and so many number one picks have one, so if they don't win one eventually, it's almost like a sign of failure, not gonna lie. Since 1997 and excluding 2024, there have been 28 number one picks. That's because they had two drafts in 1997 to take players from both college and previous pro teams. Out of those 28 number one picks, there have been 12 players with no championship rings at all. This includes the four most recent picks, excluding 2024, which are Sabrina Ionescu, Charlie Collier, 
Brian Howard, and Aaliyah Boston, three of whom are still around, so that number could fall in the future. And personally, I can't tell you what happened to Charlie Collier, so I'm sorry. Other number one picks that haven't won a championship that are still kind of around are Chanea Gumake, who seems to be vibing currently. There's Tina Charles, who has signed with the Dream to make it a total of six teams that she's played for. And Angel McCautry, who has said she wants to try and make a comeback and has been playing for Athletes Unlimited lately. Most top picks won championships exclusively with the team that drafted them, excluding Candace Parker, who has won with three teams, and Janelle McCarville, who was drafted by The Sting and won with the Lynx in 2013. There's also Ann Waters, who was drafted by the Rockers in 2000 and won with the Sparks in 2016. Considering everything, it seems like being a number one pick gives you a pretty good chance of winning a championship. And I know it's weird to phrase it that way because it's not like a championship just happens to you, but you know what I mean. Your chance of winning rises even more when you get paired with one or more other number one picks. Of all the teams that have won the finals since 2010, only two of those teams had no former number one picks at all and 11 of these teams that won had two or more number one picks. Notably, the Aces had three number one picks in a row in 2017, 18, and 19, and while it took a few years, they're definitely now at the top of their game and obviously at the top of the WNBA. And with the addition of Candace Parker to their roster, they had a record of four number one picks on their team when they won the championship in 2023. Other notable multiple number one pick teams winning the finals include the Seattle Storm. They also had two number one picks in a row with Jewel Lloyd in 2015 and Brianna Stewart in 2016. But this in addition to the 2002 number one pick Sue Bird led to a finals win in both 2018 and 2020 for the Storm. Then you also have the Lynx who won the finals four times between 2011 and 2017, headlined by number one picks Simone Augustus and Maya Moore. But you also have teams like the 2019 Mystics, led by 2013 number two pick and 50-40-90 club member Elena Deladon and no former number one picks at all. The 2019 Mystics were the first team with no number one picks on their roster that had won the finals since the Fever did it in 2012. And speaking of the Fever, with their number one pick of Caitlin Klonk this year and Aaliyah Boston last year, this puts them in a special group of teams with multiple number ones. The Fever will be one of six teams this year with two or more number one picks. I'm not in the business of making predictions, but just given the history of teams stacked with number one picks having success in the playoffs, I'd say the Fever will be in a pretty good spot in the coming seasons, if not this season. If you're still watching at this point in the video, you might be wondering what the heck I was talking about in the beginning with Kelsey Plum and the Aces. Or maybe you already know the connection because I kind of explained it and you're about to click away. But here it is. Although Kelsey Plum was the number one pick and held the D1 career scoring record, she didn't necessarily slay in her rookie season. However, it all worked out for her in the end. She got paired up with a couple more number one picks, and now she's won two championships in a row. So whether or not the rookie season of the new D1 scoring record holder goes according to plan, we can still hold out hope for great things in the future. Thanks as always for watching. If you have any questions about the data or the charts in the video, feel free to let me know in the comments below. You can also check out my GitHub where I usually post the code that I use to make the charts. I'm going to keep making videos throughout the season, so be sure to subscribe and let me know if there's any specific topics that you'd want me to cover. Okay, see you later, bye!